The Roman myth of Pluto and the River Styx Have you ever heard of a river that separates the living from the dead? Well, according to ancient Roman mythology, the River Styx existed as the thin line between the world and the afterlife. So, while Styx was the river of the underworld, it only makes sense for it to be connected to the ruler of the underworld, Pluto or Hades, as the world once knew him. In this video, we're going to be tracing the history of the Roman myth of Pluto and the River Styx to see how this site went on to be known as the River of Hatred. The story starts off with Pluto, who was the son of Titans Cronus and Rhea. He became known as Hades because of his association with the world of the dead, which was also called Hades, but in Roman mythology, he's commonly referred to as Pluto. Now, before he was king of the underworld, Pluto had always been the king of wealth. Ancient Romans believed that Pluto would dig down into the earth to retrieve buried and hidden treasures, which is how he became in contact with the underworld. Now, because he was the king of wealth, Pluto had a reputation for being greedy too. No matter how much he had, he always seemed to want more. This greed translated into his underworld kingdom as well. Why? Well, because he just couldn't stop increasing the number of people who died and came as souls to his kingdom. And at the same time, he was reluctant to let anyone leave. And this is where the River Styx comes in. When he took the reign of the underworld, Pluto also became the ruler of five rivers that surrounded Hades. These rivers were called Styx, Phlegathon, Acheron, Leith, and Cocytus, with Styx becoming the point where everything converged. Now, when a person died, their soul had to cross the Styx to be met with their ill fate. But at the same time, crossing the Styx wasn't as easy as it sounded. To cross the river and reach Hades, one had to pay a fee to the ferryman named Charon. If they were able to pay the fee, Charon, who is often represented as a skull-like demon, would carry them over to the underworld. Otherwise, their souls would spend eternity wandering around the Styx in search of a place to rest, but never finding it. Families would often bury their dead with a bunch of silver or gold coins because they believed that was how their loved ones would be able to pay off Sharon and their spirits would be able to enter the underworld. The river became known as the River of Hate or the Hateful River because of its dark black color which was supposedly a result of the river being extremely poisonous. So, now that we know what happens to the souls that don't enter the underworld, what about the souls that do manage to pay Sharon off? Well, for starters, once you enter the underworld, there's no going out. And to make sure of that, Pluto has assigned his faithful three-headed dog called Cerberus, who guards the boundaries of the underworld, making sure that not a single soul ever slips out. However, to satisfy Pluto's greed, Cerebus allowed just about everyone to reach the boundary of Hades to enter inside. So, what happened to these souls once they entered the underworld? Now the souls that were pure were then sent back to Earth. They would be relocated to a new body and sent back to start a new life, unable to remember their previous lives. To do this, they had to drink from the river Leith in order to lose their memories and start anew. Speaking of rivers, the river Acheron, also known as the River of Pain, that flowed from the Styx, was also an important part of the process and was believed to carry pain for mortals. This river also carried the good souls from the underworld that were sent back to Earth after a thousand years to be born again as new living beings. Now, according to the Greeks, Acheron is a river located in the Epirus region of northwest Greece. It flows into the Loanian Sea in Amodia. Similar to Roman mythology, the Greeks also believe that the Acheron directly flows into the Styx and is part of the five rivers surrounding Hades. However, people with evil souls would remain in the underworld forever, never being able to experience the process of rebirth, which meant that they would be stuck in limbo forever. All of these souls appeared before a panel of three judges, Radamanthus, Minos, and Achis, who decided their fates. The souls who were good went to the Elysian Fields. The Elysian Fields were also the place of residence for Pluto and his wife. 
The Golden Palace of Hades was located in these fields, and it is from there that Pluto looked over his empire. He also held court in the palace, which was located in Elysium, beside the Pool of Leith, and this entire place, also known as the City of Hades, was also home to all other gods and goddesses who resided in Hades. But don't be fooled, because not all parts of Hades were as wonderful as the Elysian fields. The souls that were eternally damned because of their bad deeds were given their fateful verdicts, and were sent down to the infernal regions called Tartarus, where their wicked spirits would be punished forever. Sisyphus and Tantalus are two examples of souls that were sentenced to be tormented for eternity in the depths of the underworld. The souls of mortals who had been both good and evil on earth were sent to the Asphodel Meadows in the underworld for unending toil and hardship. Pluto also possessed a herd of immortal, sable black cattle which roamed the Asphodel fields under the supervision of his supernatural herdsmen, Mennonettes. As far as Pluto goes, the more people that stayed in the underworld, the happier and stronger he was. In fact, an extremely popular Roman myth says that Pluto actually took Proserpina, the daughter of the goddess Ceres, to the underworld because he fell in love with her. As a result, Ceres, who was the goddess of food plants, stopped the earth from being fertile because of of which people on Earth started to die out of starvation, which is what ultimately forced Pluto to strike a deal where he would keep Proserpina for six months, and for the next six months she would go back to Earth to be with her mother. When Proserpina was in the underworld, the Earth was cold and dark, and as soon as she returned it went back to bright and sunny, and this is how Romans believed that Pluto influenced the change of seasons. Now, according to some people, the River Styx was more than just the gateway to the the underworld. It was also a river that held tons of magical properties for those who knew how to evoke them. For example, it was believed that the Styx could make people immortal because of its connection to the underworld and the hereafter. These stories stem from the old tale of the warrior Achilles, who was dipped inside the sticks as a child and, as a result, became invincible to any sort of harm. The only part of his body that was not able to get wet in the river was his heel, which is where the term Achilles' heel comes from, where the heel refers to someone's weakness. Pretty cool, right? But while skeptics can pass all of that as someone's extremely active imagination, here's the catch. The River Styx might actually exist in the real world, too. The Styx is based on a real stream and waterfall called the Mabarini, also known as the Black Water in the Peloponnese, which contains a deadly bacteria which might explain the reason why this river was believed to have been poisonous. But this is not where the myth of Pluto and the Styx ends. Why? Well, because the legend still lives on in the universe. And if you're wondering how that is possible, you just need to look up to the sky. This happened when the Romans decided to name all the planets that they could see with their eyes after some their most important gods. And of course, Pluto was one of them once it was discovered. Pluto's moon is named Charon after this ferryman of the underworld. The naming of Pluto's other moons follows this same basic scheme. Nyx is named after the Greek goddess of darkness and night, and mother of Charon, Hydra, is the nine-headed serpent which battled Hercules. Cerebros is, of course, the many-headed dog that guarded the entrance to the underworld in Greek mythology, and the last moon is named after the Styx himself. A pretty fascinating fascinating tribute to the god of the underworld, right? Well, that's a wrap for the Roman myth of Pluto and the River Styx. Comment below if you believe there is some truth to the whole story. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one.